when we're in our fairs. It's Nanny Susanne and it's bedtime reading and we have some more desert animals. We're almost done the book. Tonight it's about animals, about self-defense. So let's see what that's all about. Heat and lack of water are not the only difficulties in the lives of desert animals. They also have to protect themselves against the prowling predators that try to catch them. There are few places to hide. So many desert creatures have other ways of keeping safe. Some, such as the skunk, has a horrible smell so bad that they put off any would-be hunter. Others are too spiny to eat. The bright colors of many desert animals like lizards also serve as a warning for enemies to stay clear. So we're going to look at the Gold's mon Monitor Lizard. Kind of an odd name, isn't it? Okay, I've got Nikki here. I'm going to put her down. Just, just going to be in the way. We have a lot to talk about tonight. So the huge Gold's Monitor Lizard is up to five feet tall, probably bigger than you, Winry, and Alphaeus, and Monty, a little bit shorter than Nanny. It makes itself look fiercer by standing up on its hind legs to threaten its enemies. This Australian lizard hunts for birds, insects, and even other lizards. So let me tell you a bit about them. They love eggs, they eat birds, reptiles, they pretty much eat anything. If you put chicken nuggets and french fries in front of them, they'd eat it. So uh, they live in trees and on land and they can lay between seven and 37 eggs. That's like three dozen eggs that you find in the fridge, three of those that they can lay at the same time. So I have a picture, let me find it. And I also, I have a video, so you need to make sure, I'm taking a while here to find this, make sure that you ask mommy to show you the video. But here's this guy here, look at him. And then there's another one, look at him real close, sticking out his tongue out at you. So you watch that video, it's really fascinating. The next thing is not an animal, but it's a barrel cactus, and it is well suited to desert life. It can store water inside its rounded shape to keep itself alive during dry periods, long dry periods, and its spiny leaves protect it from plant-eating animals. So it can grow almost 30 inches around and it can reach as high as three feet three inches so that's about your height Winry and it's got yellow orange purplish flowers that come out in April and here's one that has like purplish flowers on it and then I have another one that has orange flowers on it isn't that nice and look this is like a family. It's like a pumpkin patch, except it's called a cactus patch. So the next one is an odd looking guy, but I bet he never gets caught. Here's Nikki again. Go down, girl. This is the thorny devil, a type of lizard that lives in the Australian desert and as spiny as a cactus plant. Few animals would dare to attack this creature, even though it is slow moving and easy to catch. Its body bristles with large sharp spines from its head to the tip of its tail. Even newly hatched babies, thorny devils, are covered with spines. I say ouch to the mummy who has that baby. Ooh la la. All right, let me show you a picture. Look at this guy. Whoa. And this guy, look, he's on the move. He's going somewhere. And then look at this guy. He's doing like peekaboo. 
I see you. And look at this guy. Look, he's rounded in a ball. There's his head. And then he goes all the way around and he's like he's got his tail in his mouth. What a silly creature. And I sent a video. <clears throat> so you make sure you ask for that video. And their colors, they blend into the sand and the cactuses. And they only eat one thing. Now, if you put chicken nuggets and french fries in front of them, they'd say, no, thank you. If you put chocolate chips, they'd go, no, thank you. They won't even eat nannies, nuts, and bolts. They eat ants. And they eat lots of ants. And sometimes up to 3,000 ants in one meal. Whoa, that's like a whole city of ants. And they grow tall and they grow long. So fascinating little things. All right, the next thing is the cactus wrens. It's a bird. It says they find their food on the ground, but nest in spiny cactus plants to keep their eggs safe from hunters. So I say to this that they eat spiders, beetles, ants, grass, grasshoppers, and even butterflies. Poor butterflies. So the mamas make the nest and then the daddy comes over and helps the mama out just like your daddy. And the nest is made of, you know, different uh, grass and plants and cloth. So I have this picture. Look, he's standing up on top of a cactus. Cute little guy, isn't he? And then here's one. Can you see it there? It's in a nest in the midst of the cactus. So it's all protected by those thorns. So the predators can't get to it and it's eggs. The next one is called the pancake tortoise. It has a very soft, flat shell. When in danger, it hides in a rock crevice. It then puffs up its body by breathing in lots of air so that it becomes firmly wedged in the rock. So it can't be yanked out of there very easily. So this one is called also the sprinter and hider because it just doesn't defend itself. It runs when it's really scared and it goes right in the rock and it tries to hide. But it's an excellent climber. It has long sharp claws and very flexible legs. Look at this guy. It doesn't look like flexible legs but Apparently they got flexible legs and here's two of them, two friends playing outside together. Isn't that cute? All right, the next one, oh, it's a skunk. But it's not a, like a normal skunk that you'd find around here with stripes. This one is called the spotted skunk. It defends itself from enemies by squirting them with a strong smelling liquid. This comes from glands under the skunk's tail and smells so bad that it's even hard for its victims to breathe. <coughs> you wouldn't want to be sprayed by them. Here's one in a tree. It's the only skunk that can climb a tree. All other skunk, skunks can't do it, but this one climbs a tree. And look at this one. Can you see him? He's standing up on his front paws. He's got his tail right up in the air, and ready to squirt. And you'll see because I sent you a funny, cute little video. It's an animated one about the spotted skunk. And you'll see the skunk gets up on its front paws with the hind legs up and it, psh, it will squirt. So it's good at catching rodents. You know what it does? It also knocks down beehives to get to the honeycomb. Even if it gets stung by bees, it persists to get to the honeycomb. It must love honey just as much as Nanny. And uh, it rolls the caterpillar. You know a caterpillar has got these long hairs on it? It rolls it on the ground to knock off all the hair before it eats it. And it even takes beetles and it rolls it on the ground before it eats it. Isn't that funny? The last one we're looking at is called the prickly pear, another cactus. 
and it's among the spiniest of all desert plants and almost impossible for animals to eat. These spines are, in fact, very tiny leaves. So the prickly pear, it's prickly, it's green, it's flat, oval-shaped leaves. They're called pads. And you don't want to touch them because they're very sharp and you really irritate your skin. They're also called, if I can show you a picture here, look at this. See those things growing on them? People eat them and they can be considered a fruit or a vegetable. And if you cut one in half, this is what it would look like. Almost looks like a pomegranate. Apparently it's very good. They have a taste between a bubble gum and watermelon put together. That's apparently how they taste. And they're packed with vitamin C. Isn't that wonderful? But there's none that grow around here because we don't have desert here in Canada especially in New Brunswick, we don't have desert. But apparently they survive in freezing temperatures. But there's no deserts here, so. But you guys have a couple of cactuses in your house. Remember, Winry, not too long ago we were FaceTiming and you said, look, Nanny, and you went and got it and brought it over and showed me how much it had grown. And the other one by the window that just almost goes up to the ceiling, I don't know what you're feeding those cactuses. Probably the same thing as what mommy and daddy are feeding you and Alphaeus and Monty because you're growing so much. So that's our story tonight. And Nanny had a good day and she worked all day. She went for a long walk with Hunter at lunch hour. It was cloudy and cold, but I dressed up and it was fun, fun, nice and refreshing to go for a walk in this cool weather. And uh, so I hope you had a fun day. And yesterday I heard you went to Auntie B's and uh, Uncle Justin and uh, Alphaeus. I hope you, you weren't so rough with Auntie B this time because I remember the last time when I was there in January or February and Auntie B came over and you were wrestling. Remember what happened? You hurt your nose, your nose got swollen and it was turning blue and you cried and cried and that must have hurt. Sometimes Nanny hits her nose on something and it just brings tears to her eyes because it's such a sensitive area. So I hope that you were better this time and didn't hurt your nose or anything else and I'm sure you had lots of fun and I'm sure they loved seeing you yesterday. And um, so I hope you have a good night's sleep. The angels are on their way to watch over you tonight and I hope Monty has another great night's sleep. He's sleeping so well. That's wonderful for mommy and daddy and even Monty. And I hope you guys are not getting up too early and staying in bed in the morning and watching the clock. Make sure you don't go disturb mom and dad too early because they may have been up in the night with Monty. So it's best to let them sleep and just read your books quietly and play in your room till it's time to come out. So sweet dreams tonight. And know that Nanny and Grampy and Opa and Mimir and Uncle Michael and Nana, we just love you so much. And here's all your kisses, some kisses. <coughs> to Monty, to Alphaeus, and to you, Winry. We love you so much. And we can't wait to see you again soon. So have a great day tomorrow, and we'll see you again tomorrow night. Love you.